Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Mindy here. I hope you had a great weekend and you're ready for a fantastic week. Today I wanted to talk about some fragrances that I've added to my collection. This is basically a mini haul video, but they are three fragrances that I consider all to be fairly affordable and all to be gorgeous. They're all very different, so I'm excited to talk through these with you today. I also ordered several Narciso Rodriguez samples or decants through FragranceNet, and I'm excited to talk about those as well as I'm discovering which in the range I really enjoy, but I will save that for another day because I need a little more time to get acclimated to them. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the first fragrance that I want to talk about today is from the 2B line from Police, and it is called Exotic Jungle. Um, this bottle itself looks very exotic. It's different from anything else I have in my collection, and I thought it was a really fun bottle to have. The first time I ever saw anyone speak of this fragrance, it was from Amanda Coco Cabana, and to be honest with you, that is the only review that I've seen yet on this one. This is not a talked about fragrance. When she went through it, it seemed like she really enjoyed the fragrance, she liked it, and so I'm really excited to share my thoughts with you. One of the first things that I saw after I saw Amanda Coco Cabana talk about this particular fragrance, I did add it to my you know, exploration list. And as I've explored it, a lot of people say that it is similar to another fragrance that I really love, and that is La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. So once I saw that, I was absolutely curious. It piqued my interest in this particular fragrance and I wanted to move forward with a full bottle knowing it is very inexpensive, but also if it's anything like La Nuit Trésor à la Folie, one of my most loved fragrances, I thought it would be a great one to have in my collection, whether it smells like it or not. So immediately upon first spray, this does smell like a celebrity fragrance to me. It reminds me a little bit of an Ariana Grande Cloud type fragrance. It reminds me a little bit of a Britney Spears fragrance. And the reason I felt that way is because it's definitely fruity upon first blast. It is also very sweet upon first blast. And so right away I can tell this is the type of fragrance that I would like. I like sweet, I like fruity, I like warm, and this is all that and more. As it dries down on the skin, I get a little bit more creaminess, and I know a lot of people say that the accords in this fragrance are a little powdery, but for me, yeah, I get a little bit of creaminess, almost like this is like a warm, cozy, comforting type lotion that warms on the skin and smells really beautiful on skin. That's another thing I'll mention here. It smells great on paper, I enjoy it on paper, but this really does its magic when it's on the skin. And it smells lovely once it settles into the skin. Now I see why on Fragrantica a lot of people rated this to be similar to La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. So after playing around with this fragrance a little bit, I did realize why people had thought it smelled similar to La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. I saw the reminds me of section, and you have to use a little bit of discretion when you're reviewing that. Do people say it reminds them of this fragrance because it has common notes, or because it smells exactly identical, or because it has similar accords? So sometimes I think people can think of reminds me of differently, and so I use that with a grain of salt, but it was certainly something I wanted to explore a little bit more and figure out how I felt the two compared to one another. I do think there are some similarities between the two fragrances. A lot of people say, oh, this is 90% similar, this is 60% similar. When I compare these two, I would say they're roughly 60 to 70% similar. I know we're using a ton of discretion here. It's really hard to say, you know, it's X percent similar to another fragrance, but I do think that they have some foundational similarities. One thing to call out there, they don't share really any of the same notes with the exception of vanilla and patchouli. So the rest of the notes, this has, you know, plum, black currant, lemon, heliotrope, osmanthus, jasmine, and then vanilla, suede, and patchouli. 
The only two exact notes that they share are patchouli and vanilla. And the vanilla in a la folie is a little bit different. It is that bourbon vanilla that I really, really love. So how do they compare? I find this to be fruity, vanillic, sweet, similar to this, but I do believe that La Nuit Tresor goes a little bit deeper. It's just a little bit warmer. It has a little bit more of the depth that I like to have in my fragrances. And it also has a little bit of a smoky accord to it, whereas this one does not have it. It's almost like this is a more flirty version of this fragrance, but they do have some similarities and I definitely see how people might think they smell similar in nature. The vanilla in the exotic jungle fragrance just seems to be a little bit more generic, a little bit more basic to me, but that is not a bad thing. I do think it's a fantastic fragrance. I was surprised by how much I liked this. To be honest, it's very inexpensive. I paid less than $20 for this fragrance. This is a 2.5 ounce bottle and it's a fun fragrance. I was definitely curious about one review that I saw in Fragrantica where it said that Exotic Jungle was similar to Incredible Things by Taylor Swift. I did want to compare them side by side and get my opinions on that. And I do think they smell somewhat similar, but I find Exotic Jungle to be quite a bit more fruity than Taylor Swift, Incredible Things. And honestly, there is something a little cloying in this fragrance that I don't particularly care for anymore. I liked it at one point in time quite a bit. I loved it on somebody else, but it's a little bit more floral than I prefer, and it doesn't quite have the character that I find in this fragrance. So similar, but different if you're comparing against Incredible Things by Taylor Swift. Again, I'm surprised by how much I'm enjoying this fragrance. I feel that it's quite underrated. I don't hear about it very frequently. It's inexpensive, and I think it's a great fragrance to wear. The bottle is fun. It's different than anything else I have in my collection. And again, that is To Be Exotic Things by Police. All right, now I'm gonna shift gears and talk about the new La Via Belle that I've added to my collection. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that I am a fan of the La Via Belle line. I have several of the fragrances in my collection and I love them all. They all have a special place in my collection. I do have my favorites. I'll be honest, I'm not wearing the original La Via Belle near as much as I used to. That's because my collection has expanded and I have a lot of other La Via Belle flankers that I'm really enjoying. And so today I wanted to talk about this one. This is La Via Belle Le Clot, and I love it. I've spoke about this before that I tend to be a little apprehensive when it comes to white florals. I don't know why that is. I think I had this impression that I didn't love them, but as my preferences have evolved over time, I realized that I do really like white florals, especially when they're balanced out by some sort of sweetness. So this particular fragrance has freesia and iris, two floral notes that I really love in fragrance. It has some bergamot at the top, which has a little bit of a citrusy vibe. And then in the base is vanilla, sandalwood, and patchouli. So this is the perfect combination of notes. I knew I would love this one, especially on top of the underlying La Via Belle DNA. If you're familiar with the La Via Belle Soleil Cristal, this one actually reminds me quite a bit of that fragrance. I tried this recently when I went to Kohl's. I sprayed it on my skin. I hadn't really tried the Le Clot very much, and at that point in time, I was just curious. And on my skin, I absolutely loved it. I thought that the white florals in this fragrance had a little bit of a seductive quality that isn't in some of the other La Via Belle fragrances that I have. And so I loved that about it and really wanted to bring it into my collection. When I think about Soleil Cristal, they do smell somewhat similar to me, only the Soleil Cristal has the added note of coconut, which La Clot doesn't have. This is a sweet, pretty, seductive fragrance that has that underlying foundation of La Via Belle, and I think this is a fantastic fragrance. This is one that I picked up at a very reasonable price, and the white florals in this fragrance do give me a summery feel. I can definitely see myself reaching for this quite a bit in the summer months. 
I think it'll smell lovely. As I move through my fragrance journey, I can't wait to find other white florals, explore other white florals. I definitely enjoy Rouge Malachite. I enjoy Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One Intense, 100 Silent Ways, um, Love by Killian, all are phenomenal fragrances. So I can't wait to see as my collection expands what white florals I bring in. But for now, this is La Clot, La Via Belle by Lancome. Okay, the last fragrance that I wanted to talk about today, and this is definitely a stretch fragrance for me. It's not one that I felt like would be in the type of fragrance that I would enjoy, and so I'm really excited to try something new here, and that is Insolence by Guerlain. I've heard people say Anselon, so if I'm not saying that right, I apologize. I'm gonna go ahead and say Insolence for today's video. Before I even get into the fragrance, I wanted to look up the term insolence to see what that meant on dictionary.com. And here is the definition. Contemptuously rude or impertinent behavior or speech. So right off the bat, we get a very interesting description of how this fragrance was named. And as I dive a little bit more into this fragrance, I do believe that's probably the perfect name for this fragrance. So I probably should have named this video YouTube Made Me Buy because some of these are from YouTuber recommendations. And the person that I've seen recently speak about this particular fragrance is Mila LeBlanc. So she spoke about insolence on a recent video, a 10 perfumes for life video that definitely had me intrigued about it. She described it as arrogant, cold, sophisticated, but she loved it. And that made me so curious about how this fragrance would smell. Now in reading reviews before I bought it, I did see a lot of people referencing a candy called Parma Violet Sweets. And unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that candy profile, so I can't speak to that. I usually eat chocolate only when it comes to candy. But yeah, I'm not familiar with that particular candy profile, but I am familiar with sweet tarts. And some people mention that this smells like sweet tarts. I get that, but I think it would be, for me, a sweet tart with a violet accord on top of it and a little bit of iris in the background. So outside of just that sweet candy that you think of when you think of sweet tarts, there is a little bit of a purple floral aspect on top of that that you get from this fragrance. Now what do I get from this fragrance? I find it to be cool, I find it to be sophisticated, I do get those purple florals from this fragrance. It is clean to me but in sort of a powdery sweet type way and it is gorgeous there is an air of sophistication to this fragrance that a lot of my other fragrances don't have i do think of when i think of cool with this fragrance that it could be considered to be cold it could be considered to be a little unapproachable a little bit standoffish but i love that about it I saw people talk about potentially wearing this in sort of a melancholic type situation, and I can see that as well. The woman that I see wearing this fragrance, she's cool, she's calm, she's collected, she is confident, and she's not overly concerned with what you have to say about her. I think it is one that a lot of people would really enjoy. It is rated quite high on Fragrantica. People seem to fall madly in love with this fragrance profile, and I personally like it because it's different. I have nothing else in my collection that reminds me of Insolence by Guerlain. Insolence doesn't fall into my typical tastes and preferences. It's different from anything else I have in my collection, and I absolutely love that about it. I find it to be so compelling, so curious, so intoxicating, and really so gorgeous. I think it's a great fragrance. It's one I'm gonna have to get familiar with. It's not one I would wear on an everyday occasion. I would really want to feel compelled to wear this fragrance. Like I mentioned, it's sort of a mood, it's sort of a vibe, and I'd wanna wear it for a scenario that I would feel comfortable wearing it. I have other fragrances that you know, I feel like wear me instead of me wearing them. And this could be one of those, but again, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I can see why people love this fragrance so much and I can't wait to play with it a little bit more. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this affordable mini haul of fragrances I recently brought into my collection, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up.
I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And until next time, I'll see you soon.